As we sit down for our meals, we rarely think about its source. It doesn't cross our mind to think where in the world it comes from and what climate impact it has to eat this food. Today we have an abundance of choice with exotic foods from all around the world and often all year round. But as the world is changing, in light of sustainability efforts, we look into the future of farming. Welcome to another episode of Money Matters. The issue of food supply has once again come onto the radar, and food played a significant role in recent inflation woes. This is happening whilst the world population has officially passed the 8 billion mark, with some estimates that the world population will reach nearly 10 billion by 2050. And many estimates point towards a necessary increase in food production of 70%. The horizon looks increasingly grim and scientists warn that our current food consumption and production are unsustainable. We can see that food demand is forecast to increase over the coming decades and the need for meat is still on the rise despite plant-based diets are growing in popularity in developed nations. Farmers margins have been squeezed over the years with small farms selling off for larger farms to continue and consolidate. Grain prices have shot up, but only in recent years, whereas meat prices have been increasing over the past couple of decades. As nations become more affluent and GDP per capita rises, the demand for meat naturally increases. And if we acknowledge that around 50% of land is reserved for meat production, if we include the land used to create the feed, then it is clear to see that farming efficiency needs to increase. We must also acknowledge that the increase in popularity of biofuels is so much so that an estimated 4% of world arable land, that's 59 million hectares, will be used for biofuel production by 2030. And in the European Union, nearly 16% of arable land. Despite a mass adoption of electric vehicles, biofuel demand will continue to increase and land use will continue to increase. The war in Ukraine was the reason for the increase in grain prices in 2022. According to the European Commission, Ukraine accounts for 10% of the world wheat market, 15% of the corn market and 13% of the barley market. It is also the main supplier of sunflower oil with more than 50% of world trade. Ranked in first and second place respectively, corn and wheat are also the world's most widely grown cereals. The Ukraine war and the knock-on effect on the supply of grains, this has had serious consequences for global food security. And with climate change evidently leading to extreme weather patterns, it is increasingly difficult to deliver a steady supply of food sources. When food production levels are marginally above consumption levels, this poses a problem to feeding a growing world population. Farming needs to be more like manufacturing. It needs to be smarter in order to be more efficient. Technology can be implemented to gather data, which can be used to better understand the status of the farm. This data may include moisture levels, nitrate levels, light levels, temperature, humidity, all managed centrally and from the cloud, whilst using automation techniques in order to drive up efficiencies. The result is we save water, energy, manpower, and increase yields at the same time. Our levels of control have come down to the DNA level, utilizing precise genetic manipulation, otherwise known as genome editing, making it possible to edit a plant or animal's genome down to the letter. Farmers, or perhaps they should be called scientists now, can design their ideal crop with the per perfect genome sequence. This is smart farming and many farms are evolving into a new era of agriculture. These future farms are no longer so prone to unreliable weather patterns, no longer so prone to disease, and the knock-on effect is that food sourcing is more reliable and with more stable pricing to reflect this. The evidence is enough to motivate change. It's a big investment and farmers are evolving their farming processes. The farming revolution ties in with the hot word of the moment, sustainability. And this considers the land used in farming and how it can be better used more efficiently to better our sustainability endeavors. Agrovoltaics is making waves. 
The concept refers to the joint development of the same land area for solar, photovoltaic and agriculture, allowing the cohabitation of two key sectors. Promoting the coexistence between agriculture and photovoltaics is essential to minimise the competition for land use. With the cost of photovoltaic panels having dramatically reduced, the viability of agrivoltaics becomes firmly on the radar, with many farms already implementing some degree of solar energy production. Today, there's little argument to install panels on unused or spare space, typically on the roof of buildings. However, the debate becomes whether the arable land itself can be used for panels. It sounds counterintuitive at first, crops need sunlight and panels will block the sunlight leading, uh, leading to lower yields and even failed crops. However, some crops reach light saturation point at quite low light levels. Any further light is no longer beneficial to its yield, increasing water demand and potentially causing damage and hindering growth. The shade provided by panels leads to a reduction in water evaporation and will achieve water savings. Panels can be adjusted throughout the day using computer-controlled automation to allow the optimum light through to the crops. There's little doubt that agrivoltaics will continue to be adopted and implemented in modern farming practices. Sustainability continues to dominate the headlines, whether true sustainability efforts or blatant greenwashing to entice investors or boost the corporate profile. Biodiversity is not a new idea, but it has seen only slow and reluctant uptake. Farmers preferring more intensive methods of production and focused on yield and efficiency. Causes of degraded farmland include improper crop rotation, overgrazing, unbalanced fertilizer use, inadequate fallow periods, and deforestation. The shift to adopt biodiversity is a difficult process with many case specific factors to, to consider. Bespoke solutions are required. Some government bodies offer financial incentives to promote biodiversity and the preservation of arable land. It is in effect an insurance policy against extreme weather and the potential degradation of fertile soil. The idea is that prevention of a tragedy is better than fixing a tragedy. But in some cases, it really has significant benefits in increasing yield. Rice farmers have learned to breed carp in the water-saturated paddy fields, creating a symbiotic relationship between the rice and carp. The rice provides the carp with shelter and shade and food in the form of insects that can be found on the rice. Whilst the carp will reduce insects, pests, diseases and weeds and provide manure nutrients for the rice. You can imagine the revenue increase for these farmers able to cultivate two sources of food on the same landmass. Humankind has changed the landscape to meet our dietary needs. We have cut down forests to create farms. We have destroyed ecosystems to accommodate our lifestyles. We cannot continue on this path. What we see today are new methods of farming, with countries like the Netherlands leading the way with vertical farming methods and incorporating technology and automation with its modern farming practices. They use giant greenhouses, carefully controlled indoor environments, to grow a variety of crops with greater efficiency than traditional methods. Furthermore, they can grow crops that were previously imported, arguably having a great impact on carbon emissions by bringing exotic crops to more temperate climates. Netherlands is now one of the largest vegetable export nations despite its small landmass. The Food and Agricultural Organization published a report in 2009 which suggested that by 2050, agricultural production will have to rise by 70% to meet projected demand. Since most land suitable for farming is already farmed, this growth must come from higher yields. The ag tech sector is attracting significant investment from venture capital in particular, but even some retail interest as the sector gains the spotlight and companies grow to become more accessible. Total investment in the ag tech sector for 2021 reached 10.5 billion. By 2025, that figure is expected to surpass 22.5 billion. Whilst the global pandemic has halted capital inflows in recent times, there's no doubt that there is a significant amount of dry powder ready and waiting. The industry is seeing major consolidations at the top, 
with mergers and acquisitions expected to explode again in the coming years. Some startups hail the rise of vertical farming within our congested cities, farming vegetables in computer-controlled laboratory environments, foregoing soil and natural light for nutritional solutions and artificial lighting. Apart from greater efficiencies, they champion the low-carbon footprint, locally produced produce. These modern vertical farms are just one of many examples of how the farming industry is hailing the new age of agriculture 4.0. I've only just scratched the surface of Agriculture 4.0, and the industry is developing new technologies and new methods all the time. There's no doubt that the waves created by sustainability and climate change is attracting mountains of capital and accelerating the speed of development. And there's no doubt that we, the human race, need to develop smarter, greener, and more efficient production methods. It's certainly one sector to keep a close eye on for the foreseeable future. Thank you for joining us on this episode. Let us know what other topics you would like to hear about. Give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you on the next episode of Money Matters.